Good morning, guys. I've just come to the very end of my first year as a doctor, so I thought I'd take you on a day in the life. Today is Monday, and I am just about to head off to work for my final week at Lincoln. Actually, it's my final two days because doctors change over jobs on a Wednesday. I'm just about packed up and ready to go. As you can see, the house is an absolute tip and that's because I moved all my stuff back from Lincoln this weekend and we're kind of doing a bit of a rearrange of the house. It's been a busy weekend, I've had a few orders on my Etsy shop and we went to see some friends. Here's a painting that I did this weekend for a customer. So today I thought I'd do a bit of a day in the life of, I'm on my general surgery rotation at the moment so I thought I could take you for a day in the life of an F1 on general surgery. So I'm just going to take you through and show you the orders and things that I've got packed up here. I've got my Etsy orders there and then here I have lots and lots of ASOS dresses because I'm a bridesmaid for my sister's wedding and we have been very indecisive about the dresses so these ones are all the ones going back. So if you've watched any of my vlogs before you might know that I actually work away from home so when I'm on shift I actually stay in the doctor's accommodation. I live about an hour and a half from the hospital which I guess is commutable but I would rather not commute just because I know what I'm like when I'm tired and when we're doing long shifts it's just kind of not a nice thought having to drive an hour and a half home. So I stay in the doctor's accommodation and I'm so excited this week because as I've said to you it's my last two days of work at Lincoln and then after that I start work in Nottingham which is commutable from where I live so I've only got two more days of actually living away and staying in the doctor's accommodation and I just can't wait to be able to move back home with Vince and just kind of live a bit more of a normal life rather than living out of a suitcase all the time and having to divide up my life and think about whether I've got everything with me so yeah super super excited about that but I'm also kind of sad to be finishing at Lincoln like it's a really nice small hospital and it's generally a really friendly place so one of the things that my friends and family always ask me whenever I've told them that I'm on general surgery as a job is are you actually performing surgery on people are you going into theatre and the, the short answer is no I mean I have been into theatre a couple of times on this rotation to help out and mainly when you're in theatre as an F1, it's kind of like when you're in theatre as a medical student. So if you've done that yet, you'll know that um, most of the time you're kind of just standing there either watching or um, holding one instrument for a really long period of time. The job of an F1 on general surgery is actually to be based on the wards. So if you imagine when people come into hospital, either for an elective procedure, so one that's been planned, or they come in as an emergency operation. We as junior doctors on the wards are the ones that kind of, we clerk them in, we look after them pre and post operatively and dealing with any complications that they might have after the surgery. So obviously things like pain, nausea, vomiting, infections, that kind of thing. Hopefully not infections, but it does happen. So you are ward based and you are looking after patients who are going to or could have surgery. So it will be different in every hospital you work in, but in the hospital I'm working in, there are four types of shift for, for an F1 on general surgery. The first kind of shift is just your normal working day. So the hours are eight till five, and that is the day that I'm gonna take you on today. It's just a normal working day on the wards. Then there's three types of on-call shift. Number one is cover shift, which is where you have a bleep and you can be contacted by, I think it's five wards that we cover. Most of the time during the day, you're just doing just discharge letters. So when patients get sent home from hospital, we write a letter to their GP saying what's happened to them while they've been in hospital. And then from five till eight, when all the other junior doctors from the wards go home, you're kind of covering those wards, being bleeped by the nurses to, to do things, prescribe things, see patients, that kind of stuff. So that's cover shift. Then there's um, the surgical emergency admissions unit. And I actually did four long days on there last week. So that's an eight till half eight shift. Again, same as cover. And that is where you are clerking in new patients that come in with surgical issues. So taking a history, doing an examination, and kind of coming up with a preliminary um, management plan before they get seen by a consultant surgeon. And the final kind of shift, which I will link up above here, 
is a night shift. I took you guys along with me for one of my first night shifts. So if you're interested in seeing what that's like, you can have a look there. Night shifts, again, like the other on-calls, are from 8 till 8.30. So one thing that um, I get asked quite a lot as well from you guys is about preparing for on-call shifts. Some of you, I think, are a bit nervous about doing these kind of shifts. And I know that I was, and I'm probably, I'm sure that I will be when I go into my next job as well. But I just wanted to let you guys know that my on-call shifts have genuinely been some of the best shifts that I've done at all in F1. They're just, they're so fast paced and there's always so much going on. The shifts are long, they're 12 and a half hours, but they go so quickly just because you're doing so much and it's just such a high turnover of patience. You can never predict what you're going to see or what you're going to do on an on-call shift. Although that might sound a bit scary or daunting from the outside, it, they're actually just so much good fun. Anyway, back to what I'm gonna be up to today. So, Mondays I drive from my home to Lincoln. Ward round starts at eight in the morning. So the ward that I'm on today, there are, I think there are 28 patients and I had a look at the rotor and it's going to be me and one other doctor. Gosh, this weather is not cool. It looks very gray and gloomy out there. But I'm wearing my bright summery outfit to bring a bit of sunshine onto the wards today. Hopefully it'll make one or two people smile. Guys, I just wanted to take a moment to just say thank you so much. I am loving making YouTube videos. I wish I had a little bit more time to dedicate to it because I have so many ideas for videos I want to film and I just don't always have the time to make what I to make the films I want to make, especially on this general surgery rotor. I love YouTube because it's just it is I know it sounds cheesy, but it is a community, isn't it? It's just a really nice, supportive environment. I hope that those of you watching can find other like-minded people in the comments. A quick walk over to the doctor's accommodation. I just arrived at my flat. Oh my gosh, it's so dark in here. It's crazy. It feels really empty as well because Vince and I moved all my stuff back home this weekend. And it just feels really weird in here now. It does not feel um, welcoming at all. It's very, like I haven't got anything on my notice board anymore. I haven't got anything on my shelves. Anyway, I'm gonna have some brekkie and then I'm gonna to get to work. I'm meeting my friend Joe in 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go eat my food really quick. I made myself some overnight oats and I've got them in a Tupperware, so I'm just gonna scoff those, have a coffee, and then go to work. <laughs> it's raining, it's horrible. Yeah, I didn't bring my glasses, wipey thing. We were just on ward round, the um, registrars came round and we saw every single patient, looked at their blood results, looked at what scans and things they'd had done and what else they needed doing for the day. Um, we write that all on a jobs list, then we spend the rest of the day working through those jobs and then chasing all the bloods and scans. So that is what I'm going to go do now after I've had a drink of water because I'm absolutely parched. So this is a typical jobs list for the doctors on any ward. Down the left hand column we have the patient's bed number and as we go around ward round we actually write the jobs in that need doing for each patient for the day. And the nurses can write in jobs as well. We write a little empty square box next to each job that needs doing just to say that it needs doing and then when that job is done we fill in the box so that every doctor on the ward knows exactly which jobs need doing and which ones have been done. I've written a couple of discharge letters. I'm hoping that the phlebotomists have been and done the bloods. Otherwise, I've now got to go around the ward and do them more. And I think there's probably about 16 or 18 bloods that need doing, so it's a fair amount. And then the other jobs I've got to do are um, referring some patients to other wards and other, um, and other specialities, basically lots of admin jobs. So I do actually have to do a lot of bloods and cannulas on patients today. So here I am getting all my equipment ready in the clinical room. Okay, it's 20 past five. Oh my God, look how shiny my face is. Like, that's just horrible. Time to walk back to the doctor's accommodation and I'll tell you about my shift. What's up? Just a little run through of the basic schedule of the day. So there's ward round. That generates a list of jobs for the juniors to get done. And then we spend the rest of the day, or well, the rest of the morning at least, trying to get through those jobs, which includes bloods, any investigations that we might want for our patients, any referrals to other teams, 
we spend the morning trying to sort out all of those things. Also writing letters to GPs when patients are getting discharged. Ideally you'd want to prep these the day before or, or even a couple of days before but sometimes it does happen that um, we're writing those letters on the day of discharge. Then in the afternoon the first thing that you probably want to be doing is chasing any bloods and chasing bloods basically means going through blood results that you've taken in the morning and then acting on those. So for example, if you've got a patient whose inflammatory markers are going up, which might signal that they've got some infection going on, you might want to start them on antibiotics. Or if you've got the opposite happening and you've got a patient whose inflammatory markers are coming down and they're on IV antibiotics, you might want to consider switching them to oral. Or for example, if you've got someone who's had a PR bleed and they've got a low hemoglobin, you might think about giving them a blood transfusion. So basically just using clinical analysis to think about the results of those bloods. The afternoon also means chasing scan results. So any patients who've been for CT scans, abdominal x-rays, chest x-rays, those kind of things, making sure that those are looked at and acted on accordingly. The important thing to remember for an F1 doctor is to escalate any concerns and so that means if you've got a scan that shows something sinister or something that you're not happy to deal with yourself it's really important to escalate those especially things that can be emergencies then in an ideal world the final part of the day if it's not too busy is all about prepping for the next day so what we do in Lincoln is we have these blue sheets that we use for ward round so if we've got time, what we'll do is prep the blue sheets for the next day. So we'll make sure that each blue sheet has a patient label on. It'll have their diagnosis. So anyway, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm sorry I couldn't actually take you onto the wards. Obviously, I can't take you into areas where there's patients or I might accidentally film patient identifiable information. I hope that you've enjoyed coming along with me for a day in the life on general surgery. And don't forget, you can always ask me any questions in the comments below. I always love reading your comments and your questions. Hit the like button if you guys have enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next video.